Our tour began with a trip to Old Sturbridge Village. This village is a living history museum from the early 1800s. We experienced how cloth was made from sheep to shop. First wool would have been cleaned and carded. Then the wool would have been spun on a spinning wheel onto spools, forming spools of thread for the looms. There were different sized looms for different types of weaving. As you can see, we all had a great time weaving on them looms. Water power was the technology of the day. Each mill was powered through a water wheel. In the grist mill, grain could be finely ground for flour or coarsely ground for animal feed. In the carding mill, your wool would be cleaned and processed on the machine rather than by hand. The lumber mill made it possible for lengths of wood to be cut for building. The village mills made daily work easier for people in those times. The commons was a central area in a village. Kinley calls theirs Davis Park. This is where the children played and the cows grazed. The meeting house was located there as well as a variety of homes and stores. Usually, the most prominent homes were located along the commons. Some of these homes contained spinning wheels and looms. Right off the commons was the pottery maker. He was a farmer too. He would trade or barter his pottery for other goods that he needed. What a neat way to share work. We got to meet some very interesting people who told us how they grew up in Killingly. Learning about our town history wasn't near as fascinating as hearing it from the citizens who actually lived it. Here are some of the things we learned. The town hall actually was a music hall first. Main Street Danielson was always busy. It was filled with people on the sidewalks. Children were always running around outside. Everyone celebrated the holidays together. Can you believe that before the school was built, kids went to the old high school, which is now known as the Killingly Community Center? A lady named Mary Dixon Keys was the first woman in the United States to get a patent on her new method of weaving hats. She was born right here in Killingly. Hats off to the ladies who took their time to come here and teach us all about Killingly's history. Here is the Magical History Tour. Here are some photos and brief history lessons at every stop. First stop, Alexander's Lake. Stop two, Zip's Diner. And the third stop, Pratt Road to Chase Reservoir. Stop four, Old Killingly Pond, the source of the Whetstone Brook. It provided the water power for the mills on the whetstone. Stop 5. These pictures are of the Acme Mill and the Judge Young Mill. Stop 6, North Road, Killingly's Highest Point. Stop 7, Valley Road. We followed the Whetstone Brook and saw where many mills once stood. Stop 8, Cat Hollow. There are once three mills here. Now it is a park where we stopped and had our lunch and toured. This is the last mill along the whetstone. It is the present day Colts Plastic. This is where the whetstone joins the Five Mile River. Stop 10, Davis Park, Killingly's Commons. Stop 11, Main Street, Current Historical Society, former Bugby Library Building, Town Hall, former Music Hall, Danielson Manufacturing Company, Mill Corner of Main and Maple Streets. As we turn right onto Maple Street heading back to Kiss, we note the Tiffany Building across the Quinnebog River in Brooklyn.
Mural Concept, the recreation of an 1836 postcard of downtown Danielson. In the beginning, town workers cleaned up the building for us. Initial planning. Teaching extends outside of the classroom as students and teachers work side by side and collaborate in making this phenomenal project a reality. Viewing the efforts of our student-teacher collaboration. Girls' Day Out. The building up of our little town begins to develop. Working together reaps dividends. Detailing begins to make old-time downtown Danielson look real. Teacher's work does not always end at the end of the school day. What a gift we are creating for our Danielson community.